Hi guys, I'm Michael Clift and today on the online prosperity show, we're going to be talking about how you can master chaos and generate more revenue within your business profitably with clarity, focus and accountability. So make sure you come check it out. Welcome to this episode of the Online Prosperity Experience, where we sit down with Michael Clift, a dedicated business coach and a father of two who has a dream that no small business will ever fail again. Now, Michael, thank you so much for coming to the show today. Thank you for having me, Prosper. Um, I'm very excited to be here and it'll be interesting to see what we have to talk about. Fantastic. Obviously, you're a strategic sales and business wealth specialist that's predominantly working with small to medium businesses, making sure that you can help them find more than $50,000 in less than 45 minutes within their business. But this didn't just sort of come by by itself. Uh, for those that are watching right now, Michael's passion for coaching stems from a conversation that he had with his own father who had actually built a multi-million dollar business but was unable to retire due to financial constraints. Now, as coaches, um, I mean, and and consultants in this uh you know, journey, we're all trying to find um, ways that we can create businesses that are profitable and enjoyable. And that's the reason why we've got Michael on the show today. Now, Michael, walk us through what that conversation actually did for you and what it is that you are doing for your clients at this particular moment. So that that conversation was really quite confronting because it's a multi-million dollar business, right? Like you look at multi-million dollar businesses and you think that person's got plenty of money. Everything is okay. And then when I, I dug a little bit deeper after he told me that, because that was my first question is what do you mean that you can't retire? Like that's ridiculous is that there it's a multi-million dollar business that didn't have a lot of money there. And the profitability was terrible. And it's because they'd been doing the same thing for 20, well, at the time it was like 26, 27 years. So they, they were doing the thing and they're the expert at the thing, but they've never had to do anything differently. So they didn't have the growth element in it. So they didn't have exposure to other ideas that came in. And so while they were successful, they were missing, well, we, I say successful, the top line looked successful, the bottom line did not at all. What that did for me as a person is it was a it was a massive eye opener because I'm like, oh my God, like, well, really you should be retiring now. Let's fix that. And then I started going through that, okay, are you doing this? What's happening here? And started digging a bit deeper. And that's when I really really realized like the whole business was my dad and his business partner. Like they were the business. There was no systems in place. There was they didn't have a team behind well they did but they didn't they hadn't trained their team up to be a proper team behind them um there was no consistency in any of the systems which meant they couldn't exit which is why they had to wait longer to retire because they were waiting for more money to come in before they could do that how that made me transition is i then started drawing a whole heap of lines to my experiences because i'd been working at the time with other small business owners helping them for it was about four and a half years at that time and going, okay, well, I've always noticed that these people haven't had exposure and they need help and I've been helping them, but I believe there's more to this and there's more that I can do. And then I've, I actually had someone who I'd been helping just because I wanted to, and it was fun who said to me, I would pay you a lot of money for this and what you're doing to help me. And I'd be paying someone else if it wasn't for you. And that's how I got my first client. I sat down with that person and said, okay, here's the option. I can give you the, I guess, my spare time to help you, or you can get dedicated time. If you want dedicated time, you pay for it. Otherwise I'll keep helping you for free. And they signed the agreement we put together and paid the money that day. And that's kind of how I got to where I am now. Fantastic. Uh, Fantastic. And thank you so much for sharing that, that story. I mean, a lot of us 
um, you know, have these conversations, but they never really, um, you know, create something out of it. Now, you mentioned something that's very interesting, where your father's business was a public success, which meant, you know, top level, um, you know, top line was successful, but the bottom line, um, they were not being prof profitable. How do you define success for a small business? So that's a difficult question because success for me is very different for everyone else. Um, in a small business, for the, for the owner, you can only define set success by yourself as to where you want to be, right? So before I put, I just want to clarify that before I put my aspect of success out there, for me, I believe success for myself is having the freedom to do what I want and the funds to be able to do that. And I think that most people go into business with that exactly the same mindset as they want freedom. And that comes from monetary freedom, freedom of time, freedom of choice, so that they're able to really take what they want from the business. The problem is, and like in dad's case, for example, is that they don't necessarily, like they, they're doing a lot of the hard work, but they, they've created... I want to say a trap for themselves, but they, they're really in the business and they're stuck in that business. Um, and when we say they weren't profitable, well, they're not, they weren't unprofitable, like they weren't in the red. But here's the problem is if you're at running at less than 10% profit margins, you're a sneeze away from your business falling over. That's that's what the challenge is. And it does mean that there's things that you can't do. And it does mean you can't retire, for example. So th does that answer the ab question? Ab absolutely. And I appreciate that, um, you know, notion of you defining your, your success. What, and when you were talking, you know, you mentioned that your um, father's business was riddled with, um, you know, a lack of systems. And it, it also had, um, you know, the business owner tied to the actual business, which meant they could not be released. And if they would not be present in within that business, that meant that business would not function. What are some of the most common challenges that maybe small businesses face and they don't quite realize? And how do you actually help them, um, you know, overcome these? Well, there's, there's a lot. I, I think uh, the first, the biggest two challenges, probably even going to take a step back. I think the biggest challenge is mindset. And it's the, the something that I originally got from Think and Grow Rich, which is if you think you can, you can. If you think you can't, you can't. You're right either way. And I, I believe that that's probably one of the biggest challenges a lot of people have is that they think they can't do something, so they don't. And they're subconsciously, like if you say, oh, I can't do this, words are powerful. It actually tells your subconscious that you can't do it. And that just goes, okay, I'm not responsible for that anymore because we can't do anything with it. And that's gone. And that's a huge problem. And a lot of people are stuck on that. The second part is really is it's exposure to different ways to do things and having access to people that have done it differently or just know how to tweak it that little bit better for you. And then what, what I do for people is I come in and I help them when we break it right down, it's three things and it's clarity, focus and accountability. So the, the clarity aspect really is around what you can achieve and what you want to achieve. And it's where are you now and where do you want to be? And then the focus is understanding what we can do to achieve that and when we need to do it. And then the accountability is in the um, politest way possible is a kick up the butt to make sure you take action. Because the other layer to what I just said previously is that the people that do know what they need to do and where they want to be and, and what it is often just don't take the steps to do it. And that that's the, the main part and the biggest thing that I do for people is provide clarity, focus, and accountability. Fantastic. Outside, 
yeah, outside of that, obviously, I'm good at generating profit for people. But like that. <laughs> <laughs> we're going to jump on to that. I, I, I love these three uh, words and values that you just brought into play here. The clarity, the focus and accountability. And obviously, with clarity, if you can see where you're going and see around the corners, then it's easier for you to actually step into that which you want to create. And with focus, um, I remember, I think I read um Robert Kiyosaki's book um I was about to say think and grow rich based on the book that you yeah. you mentioned I think it was rich dad poor dad and he was talking about focus which basically he made it into an acronym which meant follow one course until successful and so many people dabble in so many different things like you know whatever is the flavor of the month and they don't necessarily um, you know, achieve what it is that they want to do. And I absolutely love that you've got accountability, um, you know, baked into what you're doing, because once somebody's clear on what they're doing, and they really know the one thing they're supposed to be working on, if they have somebody who's got the checks and balances, and you know what it looks like when you've arrived, that actually is an amazing thing. Is this what constitutes your MTPL method, um, you know, that you created? Or is it is it something totally different? So, so it's integrated into part of it. So MTPL is it's just I put put that together because it was an easy way to describe the four key elements that I look at within a business, which is money, time, peace of mind, and the ability to live your dream. So before I go into that, the the accountability side with the focus, the clarity, the focus, and accountability is when we work when I work with someone, it's very much about we're building out a roadmap of where we're going to go. So we need to know where we're going to go. Then we build out the roadmap, not just for the, the key milestones, but also what are the things we're doing from a monetary point of view to get there. And that's where the money part comes in, which is I license from uh, an American company called focus.com, which is a great coaching community, um, profit acceleration software. And what I use that for with people is to look at, 12 to 40 areas within their business where we can get growth and incremental growth so that we can get the money to fund everything else. And just a quick little fun fact is it only takes 7% growth in 12 areas of your business to double your revenue. Now, if you double your revenue without really adding overheads in there, imagine what that's going to do to your profit a lot more than double your profit. So there's that. But then we look at time. And because we're we're getting money right, we start looking at time. We're looking at your efficiencies as you as a person. We're then looking at where we can buy back your time personally. So whether that's cooking, cleaning, just getting your shopping delivered, um, you know, are you driving around everywhere when, when potentially you could catch an Uber and actually do some work in the car. Like there's a lot of different things you could look at. And then also how are we buying other people's time? Are we, do we have team members? Are we outsourcing? Are we getting experts in that are a lot better at doing the thing than anyone you could hire for less money? Then we go into peace of mind. Now, peace of mind sounds a little bit airy-fairy until you break it down, which is where building out your team, which is what we just talked about with either internal or external people so that we have people that are actually doing the things. So it's not just you. And then we're looking at your systems in place so that the things actually happen. And then we're automating so that as much can happen without someone touching it, as long as it keeps adding value to the experience. So by doing that with the peace of mind, it means you can actually take time off work and not be in the business all the time and not feel like it's going to burn down, whether that's for two days, two weeks, three months, whatever that is. Then the other aspect is, is living your dream. No one went into business so that they could work 24 seven and earn less money than if they had a nine to five job. No one, right? <laughs> so why did you go into business and sometimes the reason why you went into business and where you want to be with your business now has changed, but we haven't changed the direction of what we're doing with the business. So we really want to identify 
what you actually want to do with the business, whether you want to be on the beach shipping pina coladas, whether you want to be um, why the business runs itself, whether you want to franchise, where, whether you want to sell that business, what that is, so that we're constantly building up towards that. And that, that's what my method is, is we're really breaking that down and then giving you a roadmap and then holding you accountable while providing you the support. So I don't sell information, I sell implementation. Fantastic. I, I love that last statement, you know, about implementation because everything out there can be Googled and especially yeah, what you're, right. you're, you know, what you're talking about, um, you know, in terms of the peace of mind that somebody can actually get and the actual reason and tender of why you entered into business, because a lot of entrepreneurs are just spraying and praying either with their marketing and they're not actually receiving the benefit of them owning their own business. And they'll be better off working for somebody who actually has, um, you know, created the systems, the processes and the flow that they could actually um, you know, get paid more than they are while saving behind their own business. Now, obviously, with this sort of transformation that you give your clients, there is bound to be some sort of a success story that maybe you can share with us to really showcase how this um, translates into real life um, implementation, like you say. Now, do you have a success story of a client who's actually implemented this MTPL method and actually achieved significant revenue growth. Which one? <laughs> like there's, there's, there's quite a few. Okay. Let's, let's go with my very first client. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, My very first client, right. Who's, who's still with me. Who's the one that I was working with for free before signing so Steve now, I, and I, I had my coaching session with him this morning before this, they've gone from a $250,000 thereabouts revenue business to a million dollar a year business plus, and that's over the space of two years, not even two years. And this is from going through that now. Both him and his wife had to work in the business um, previous to that. We are talking this morning and Shara, his wife, is now looking to only do two days a week, whereas they are all doing full-time all the time. So that that's a big shift in itself. Steve's probably never going to do that because he loves working, but again, that's, that's for him. So the first thing that we did with our business is we went in and we worked on the money. And what we did is we, we actually identified a key offering that he didn't have previously on repairing um, tractor service equipment that we added in a high ticket offering for him. And just that in itself has generated the better part of 350 grand over that period of time. It's opened a lot of doors. It's a lot more profitable. We're talking about 80% profit. And then we've worked on his time. We've introduced more team members we've introduced uh va to help him out which obviously the result of that is his wife can take a step back from from a, a peace of mind point of view we've worked on the system so they they actually um it would have been a few months ago took their first like real family holiday together which was fantastic and the other part is and uh if anyone goes to my linkedin they'll see it i shared a text from him is he texts me like three days into the month and all his overheads are paid for for the entire month. He has 5K in the bank and he had an extra $50,000 of revenue, which everything being covered, most of that's profit coming in and we're three days into the month. Fantastic. That is such a great story. I saw that text and I was like, way to go champ. And um, thank you so much for sharing that, um, you know, um, case study with us there. Now, if somebody is now thinking to themselves, wait a minute, I might need some of this um, MTPL stuff. What would be the best place to go to? I know you've mentioned your LinkedIn, but do you have any other places where people can actually really get, um, you know, a glimpse of you in action, especially online? Honestly, like LinkedIn is really the space where I'm at with it. I do have Facebook and Instagram for venture cultivation coaching. 
I I do have a web, like the main website is vcwealthcreation.com.au, but I would encourage anyone to go LinkedIn. That's where a lot of my time is focused. I'm giving a ton to the community in LinkedIn. And if you DM me and ask a question, I'll come back to you. That's fantastic. And that's where we would have connected. And obviously now, like I was telling you earlier, I feel like I've known you forever. Now, one thing that I've noticed with the content that you post out there, especially with um, LinkedIn, is is much to do with, yes, obviously the business side, but you really do showcase um, you know, your lifestyle, your family, um, you know, your kids. I even know your 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 daughter's name just based on you, um, you know, posting. And I've seen you and Laura celebrating your anniversaries and things of that nature. Now, what sort of advice? And I also heard when you spoke about Steve, how you've helped him also really connect with his family, um, you know, so they can actually have um, you know, enjoyable mo- memories and times with their family. Now, what sort of advice do you have for those small to medium businesses that are, first of all, struggling to balance their work and personal life and also thinking that they don't need to, um, they, they need to work super hard and, you know, sort of like forget looking after their, their family in the process? So let me do say one thing. And then I'll get into it a bit more. But this is one thing that everyone should really think about and it really should hit home for people. One hour is less than 1% of your week. So if you're telling me you can't give one hour to your family, your focus is in completely the wrong direction. Because one hour is not going to make a difference. Like if it'll make a difference to the connection with the family, it's not going to make a difference to your business. That's that's the biggest part of it. The second part of it is it's really not that hard to find time if you go looking for it. And if you go and actually break down what you're doing in a day and what is actually important, you will find you are doing a lot of things that are unimportant because you feel like you have to. Let me give you permission right now and tell you that you don't have to. It's not a thing, right? Like there's plenty of things you feel like you have to do that you don't actually have to do. And you just need to 80-20. Everyone talks about it. No one uses. Go grab that. Have a look at what you're actually doing. Absolutely. And yeah, no, man, thanks for sharing that. And half of those things that we sort of want to ignore are the actual things that really help us be doing and have a happier existence. And those that are around us are the ones that are actually with us most of the time um, while we're trying to uh, please people that don't even bet an eyelid, um, you know, especially those that we find in our social media feeds. All right. So while you're working with your clients, um, there's always maybe a few sort of limiting beliefs and based on who you've become and, you know, how far you have come, um, you know, there's certain things that you can see and notice within your clients and say, Hey, that you should stop that so that they can actually start getting, um, you know, the success that they're getting. And based on the case study that you have with Steve, um, you know, you, you've really helped him, you know, overcome a few uh, things. How do you then help your clients develop that growth mindset and overcome limiting beliefs? Okay. So oh, firstly, you need to understand where, where they are and where they want to go. Like it all comes back to this and then we need to know the steps. And then it's, it's talking these through and like, as a coach, and I did a really fun post about this, but it's not all unicorns, rainbows, hand-holding, stuff like that. There's some people that want it to be like that, but I am not like that at all. I'm not here to be your friend. I will be if we work well together, but I'm not here for that. And it means that I will tell people some hard truths the way that I see it, and I will put it in such a way that they have to stop and go, Oh my God. And I have a really great example. And I was kind of chopping, chomping at the bit from last week with one of my clients. Now she won't mind me sharing this. So just, just for the record, but Julie, um, part of what she does is renovate houses. That's not the full offering, but when she, she does it, what she's found is that they hadn't really 
added in when you're selling a house, you've got to maintain it. And there's certain jobs and things like that that have to happen. And they hadn't factored in costs for that. So what was happening is all her weekends have been dedicated to doing all these bits and pieces. And obviously every time they turn a house, there's probably, let I'm going to say, let's call it tens of thousands of dollars so that I'm not giving her details away. But there's tens of thousands of dollars of profit in selling a house, right? And I said to her, so if we factored in $3,000 into that, what would that do? And she's like, oh, we could probably do that. I'm like, okay, so how valuable is 10 hours on a weekend to you? How valuable is 520 hours a year to you? How valuable is 5,200 hours over 10 years worth to you? And really start painting that picture and helping them understand like what their actions are actually costing them. Because at the like that's what it is. Whatever we do is an opportunity cost. So it, our mindset, when we're not doing something and when we're not growing, we aren't like we're we're costing ourselves. Like, what's the cost of my ignorance for me personally right now? Is okay. So I don't have a $10 million business. So the cost of my ignorance is I don't have a $10 million business. It's costing me $10 million a year to not know that, right? Like that's that's a big problem for me. And for Julie, it's, it's costing her, it's more than 10 hours. But I said 10 hours because me being me, I'm like, oh, you could do four hours work, two hours each day on your business to take it further. That's my suggestion. She doesn't have to do that. She gets a weekend back. But you know what I'm saying, right? And- I think the added layer to that is then we were talking a bit more and she had some of her team then had to do some of those roles as well. Now, these those guys are her support and lead generating guys that were out helping on site. And I'm like, okay, so if they just cost you three leads and by doing that and you convert one in three people, that's potentially cost you 50 grand. Let's call it 50 grand. It's probably not 50 grand. It, but like let's just call it for the sake of it just by having them outside for on site for that time now when you have conversations like that with someone that's how you help them shift their mind pretty quickly like you've got to take them through the pain and then how do we get past the pain so that you can get a really great experience and you can get the things that you want because i mean to be coachable you have to have experienced a certain amount of pain that's that's how I and like I don't want to say I'm rubbing their noses in it, but that's a lot of like I'm really highlighting what they're missing out on so that we can make those changes. And obviously the result is really good for them. Maybe not always an enjoyable experience to get there, but I'm not here to be your friend. I'm here to help you get your dreams, right? Fantastic. No, this is this is all interesting because at the end of the day, like you say, you know, you you are really here to help people, um, you know, really get clarity, really focus on what it is that they're working on and stay accountable. Now, what is it that we can expect now, you know, from you as a coach moving forward now that people are getting to know you now? What can they look forward to, um, especially hearing about you or from you uh, as they continue their journey to get to know, like and trust you? You're going to see a lot more of me. Um, interestingly enough, this is the fir first podcast that I'm doing. So thank you, Prosper, for getting me on here. I have, I think, three booked in now since our initial conversation. So you'll just see me in that space. You'll see me helping people. Uh, I'm almost filled with all my one-to-one -one slots. I am looking to build out a mastermind group because that's the space that I love and I love getting in front of people and talking and helping people and connecting people together. And going forward, I have a 10 year plan and it will be venture cultivation coaching will be big and there'll be a lot of supporting things around that. So it's, it's not only is it going to help out coaches, but it, well, sorry, not only help out service-based business owners, but it's going to help out coaches as well. So what, watch this space. It's, and it's not just in Australia. I, I'm working with some international people and I can work with international people. So 
going forward, you will see a lot more of me. There will be a lot more success stories and there'll be a lot of people helped, which is that's, that's what I'm passionate about is making sure that small businesses don't fail one business at a time. Cause I, I may never reach that, but it, it, as many people as possible. Fantastic. Well, I know, you know, uh, we could go on and on and talk about everything else that comes along the line. And I can see you stroking your beard. There, yeah. you know, you just, <laughs> it just reminded me of one last question that I wanted to, to ask. And I know Laura is going to be watching this uh, episode. So why doesn't Laura want you to cut your beard, sir? Okay. So when I shave my beard, I look like I'm about 12. <laughs> so, um, which look, uh, it is a blessing from the point of view of looking young, but it's not that great when you're working with business owners, if you look like you're about 12, because it does put in that, oh, what do you know? You're like two years old, right? Like why, why am I listening to you kind of thing? So. Absolutely. Well, I really appreciate you being on the show today and thank you so much for bringing this wealth of knowledge. And um, those that are watching from home, that concludes our conversation with Michael Cleft, the business coach. And as you've noticed, he's a father, he's an advocate for small business success. I hope you found this episode informative and inspiring and that you've gained some valuable insights on how to master all the chaos that happens when you start scale and grow a business that's profitable and enjoyable. And when you then venture in to generate re revenue and achieve your business goals with clarity and focus. Now, Michael, thank you so much for your time on the show today. Thank you, Prospero. I appreciate you having me here. Fantastic. Now, for those that are also watching, if you are a six to seven figure business, um, and especially if you're a B2B service provider that's looking to take your business to the next level, I recommend that you reach out to Michael and learn about his MTPL method. I'm going to be putting the details on how you can contact him, um, you know, on, on LinkedIn and also directly on his website, vcaacademy.com. Now, thank you so much for tuning into the online prosperity experience. And if you enjoyed this episode, please leave us a review on your preferred podcast, podcast platform and share with your friends and colleagues. Now, stay tuned for more inspiring conversations like this with thought leaders and industry experts that will help you create a business that's profitable and enjoyable. Bye for now.